Kasih setiamu nyata bagiku Hikmat kebajikan tersedia bagiku Sebab Allah sanggup Terimakan segalanya Dan anugerahnya Sangat besar bagiku Aku diberkati Aku dilempahi Karena alat sanggup Untuk menyediakan Aku diberkati Aku Our church office is open every week from Tuesday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. To contact the church, please call this number. Christian education will be held online through Zoom on Sunday, 8.30 a.m. Links for invites and passwords will be sent out every week prior to the meeting. For more information, please contact Elder Lau. Every Tuesday, Prayer points will be published online for our Tuesday corporate prayer. Please take the time to read through them and pray for one another. Home sales will proceed as usual. Please contact your cell leaders for more information. Your tidings, offerings, and givings can be sent directly to the church office to Sister Elizabeth Balan. It can also be sent through checks, online banking, and cash deposits. Do inform our church treasurer, Deacon Richard Penguran, if you had given in your tidings and offerings. A contribution of 10 ringgit per year for the ministry by Pusat for the year 2020 is still open. Kindly make your contribution payment at the church office. And it is the month of November. We at BM Pelita would like to wish a very, very blessed birthday. We pray that the Lord continue to bless you and your families. Now, very good morning to all of us today. And I pray that God is speaking to you wherever you are, in your homes, in your workplaces, May God's presence be enveloped around you as you listen to the word today, as we listen to the word today. And we have come to the concluding chapter in the Colossian series, which is chapter 4. And before we go in detail into the sermon, to the sharing today, I invite us all to pray. I lead us in prayer. Father God, God of wonders, the God who is always faithful to us, even in the journeys we take in life. Lord, we pray today that you speak to each and every one of us as we come to the concluding chapter in the Colossians series, which is chapter 4. May you speak to us through your word. And this we pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. So let's look at Colossians chapter 4. We won't start with verse 1 because I believe that verse 1 is connected with chapter 3. So we will begin with verse 2 and onwards. Let's start with what the prayer life looks like. And I want us to concentrate on verse 2 here where it says, Devote to prayer. Now, devote would say it in a way like immerse, dive in deep, let that life be your constant practice. The meaning of devote in English is give all or most of your time, of one's time or resources to a person or activity or in 
another sense, use a certain amount of space or time to cover probably a certain topic. It would be a good time for us to reflect on our own prayer life and whether it is at the top of the list of our priorities. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, also mentions prayer and the fact that Paul says, pray without ceasing. It does amplify his call for us to devote ourselves to prayer. Let me make this comment. As human beings, we devote a lot of attention on why we should act. Be active, doing, doing, doing. And yes, Paul also has a passage in 2 Thessalonians 3 on why we should keep busy and work. It would seem reading Paul with all the missionary work, traveling, debating, proclaiming the gospel, and working as a tent maker to support himself, would he even have time to pray? But it seems for Paul, the harder you work for the progress of the gospel, the harder you pray also as well. In some instances, there are people who only prioritize prayer and forget the work of sharing or going to share the gospel. And some who prioritize going and forget the prayer life. For Paul, both are important and one cannot survive without the other. So let's make that clear. So we come back to focusing on prayer. Paul's call for us to devote to prayer should spur us and encourage us to take it seriously. Prayer is setting a time to concentrate, to pray also, and also the fact that we should pray without ceasing. This means that we are in constant conversation with God. It is the practice of where we get in tune with God and we listen to discern Him as we live our lives. Now, someone mentioned to me before that if prayer is our conversation with God, then why doesn't God speak back? Now, basically, it's because we are not in tune. Like before we knew the existence of God and had an experience of His love, we didn't care how we live. But when we wake up from our spiritual slumber, we begin to realize His presence. Like someone who is well-versed in repairing cars, a mechanic, for example, know what to look for. They will ask specific questions to pinpoint what's wrong with the car. They will listen and scout specific places of where to look for the problem to find the right solution for the purpose of repairing the car. So too with prayer, if we are consistent and devote ourselves to prayer, we will know what to look or listen to. The more we devote, the more in tune we get. And it is sort of easier for us to know God speaking and directing us. But let me add this, if we are not consistent in reading the Bible, then it will be hard for us to build a foundation to listen to God. So prayer is us tuning into God, tuning in to listen to Him. And His Word becomes the bridge to build a solid foundation for us to be able to discern His leading. And another thing in verse 2 says, Be being watchful and thankful. Prayer also consists of us being watchful being alert and ready for danger or the enemy's cunning ways. Prayer prepares us for these moments. It has in it warfare mode of defending and attacking. Prayer is also the language of thankfulness where we immerse ourselves with gratitude to the God who has given everything on our behalf. It is the feeling of contentment as well as immeasurable knowledge of God's goodness, love, and grace. Watchful and thankful. As a warfare language, 
being intently on God and praise, always being mindful of gratitude for the Lord's work in us. Prayer is also intercession for the work of the gospel in verse 3 to 4. And Paul says, And pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. As much as prayer is our personal practice, it also connects us as believers. Intercession for those who bring the gospel to others is our partnership with our fellow brother and sisters. As we pray, we ask God to open opportunities to proclaim the message, may it be through situations of life that is happening, struggles people go through, beauty of the world, simple conversations we have, a testimony shared concerning God's hand in our lives, through how we act, wherever we are, the workplace, school, college, university, in our family. We pray that God will open opportunities to open the way for others who are sharing the gospel. We intercede that God's mystery will be revealed and that those who bring the message of the gospel will proclaim the message clearly in a way that it is not like chin chai, dumbing down the message, but being able to give a comprehensive and understandable proclamation of Jesus to others. And next, it talks about our twofold witness. Colossians 4, verse 5 to 6. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may, so that you may know how to answer everyone. The two important factors for the gospel being presented well are through our life, how we act, and how we speak in our speech. So let's focus on act. How you act shouldn't be confused with being nice. Doing the right thing for a given situation is what is called for here. Hence, we are to be wise in how we act. Now, Pastor Sabi shared of what her brother did while using the public transportation in Singapore. He saw someone trying to take advantage of a woman while sitting next to her. So he spoke up and the guy stopped his behavior. News about it went viral as he posted that women should not condone such acts and called for the public to speak up when they saw such behaviors. Being wise in how we act makes the most of opportunities in life and makes a bridge for us to point to Jesus. In our speech, this one points to how we bring about our conversations. Not argumentative, not being defensive, not being rash or harsh, but in a controlled, gentle manner, by being gracious, being kind and pleasant. Tone of voice and choice of words should be important. And this is to make a point in the way that we give an answer to everyone who asks or queries us about the issues of faith. So we look to the final greetings in verse 7 to 18, where Paul mentions about those who are working alongside him as they bring about the gospel message. So we arrive to the last few verses of Colossians, and here Paul writes about those with him, his team. So the letter carriers in verse 7 to 9, Tychicus is mentioned constantly in Paul's letters, Ephesians 6, 21, Colossians 4, 7, 2 Timothy 4, 12, Titus 3, 12. 
Now he is a believer, a dear brother, and faithful minister who brings the gospel, witnessing to others, and companion with Paul, serving Jesus. He is the one carrying this letter. The purpose sending Tychicus was to bring updates on Paul's work and what's happening. The intent was for encouragement so that the hearers will be refreshed and energized, knowing the progress of the gospel and also to inspire them to do so. Along with him is Onesimus, who we read about in the letter to Philemon, a fellow believer, a native, a local of Colossae, of the church in Colossians. One of you, he says. And next, we look at the Jewish co-workers in verse 10 to 11. Aristarchus, Mark, and Justus are the only Jews among Paul's co-workers. And noting how they have proved a comfort to Paul does simply imply Paul's ache for his people. Among them, comments about Mark have some detail to it. Mark was one of the main reasons for the rift between Paul and Barnabas. You can read this further in Acts 15, verse 36 to 41. In that rift, they went their separate ways. According to what Paul states in Acts 15, Mark deserted them while they were thick in ministry work, and he thought it unwise to bring him along. Paul didn't want setbacks in his own team to be the cause of not being able to go forward. Barnabas, on the other hand, extended a second chance to Mark. Now, the Bible does not tell us who was right. It only tells us that they went their separate ways. They had a sharp disagreement among them. Reading through it, I'm convinced that Paul and Barnabas were both right. Right in a sense that they had differing or different views on how to go forward. But the beautiful picture here is that from this letter, we see reconciliation happening. And Paul's recommendation of Mark is such a big recommendation indeed. Because earlier he says that it, Mark was not fit to be brought along. But now he commends him. Now that's a big compliment. So now we focus on Paul's Gentile co-workers. Verse 12 to 15. The Gentile companions that sends greetings are Apraphras, Luke, and Demas. Of the three, Paul hones in on Apaphras, someone who is termed as their people, one of you, a local to the church of Colossae. Paul pays special attention to him because of his close relation to them. He's a local and how his affection is to them for the faith. Paul notes that he wrestles in prayer for them. That's intense. The wrestling is not like a WWE depiction of how the wrestling sport is. To pin down, thus the struggle to pin down. This is another depiction on prayer. It is not the normal and uneventful mode we conjure in our thoughts, but a full-on fighting mode. The prayer is that they are firmly set rooted in God's will, His desires and ways. This is a sign of one firmly set in the faith, the vision of maturity. Prayer in the form of intercession is seen as an integral part in spiritual growth. So we should not regulate prayer for just prayer meetings or before bed or thanksgiving of the food we eat. Prayer is part of the spiritual growth. It is part of the work. It is an important part of the work, let me add. And in the closing remarks in verse 16 to 18, the letter is not just focused for one church, but the contents are for other churches as well. In verse 16, it says, And then Paul tells the church in Colossae to 
remind Archippus to complete what God called him to do. It must be something important. Otherwise, Paul wouldn't have mentioned it. What has God called for you to do? Go and complete it. Paul reminds them of where he is. What would have been the significance of that? Was it a warning of what awaits if they are bold for the gospel? Or is it a call to be continually be committed to Jesus? Now echoing what Paul wrote in Philippians, people got to know the reason he was in prison, in chains. It was his devotion to Jesus. And after all, we are slaves to Jesus, committed to serving him. The world tries to stop the gospel from spreading with chains, but still, it continues to flourish even under persecution. So in chapter 4, we learn about the inner life of a believer, which is focused on prayer, devoted to prayer. So for us, let's remind ourselves that prayer is not just one part of life. It is an important part of the Christian life, of a believer's life, of a follower of Jesus' life. Devote to prayer. We are called to live wisely in our actions, in our deeds. And another thing that we should remember when, when we read Colossians 4 is that we can't do ministry alone. Paul had a team with him. Some were being letter carriers, reading the letters, being a source of encouragement to where they were sent. Some were aides. Some were together, sitting down together with Paul. Right? We need a team. We can't do ministry. We can't do gospel work alone. We need a team with us. And lastly, we should always remember that being committed to the gospel, being committed to bringing the gospel, persecutions will await us. If we are really on fire, if we are really bold, if we are really pushing to, to share the message of Jesus to others. But one thing is for sure, that even when persecution comes, even when chains try to deter the progress of the gospel, nothing can stop the progress of the gospel. And in here, while Paul is trapped in prison, the gospel is still spreading out. It's still growing, it's still blossoming. So let's remember all these things as we come to the closing of the Colossians series, which is chapter 4. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we pray, God, that we will focus in on our prayer life. Our prayer is that we will be devoted, like what Paul says here, devoted to prayer. Because prayer is not just one segment of our life. It is an important part of what makes us believers in Jesus. Father, we pray also that our lives, how we act, how we speak, be lived wisely as we live in this world so that we have opportunity to share about you, to point to you, so that people will know that there is change in, in us when we believe in Jesus. And Father, we also pray that when we make, make a commitment to bring the gospel, we need a team around us. We cannot do it alone. And so we pray, God, that you also help us build teams as we bring the gospel. Because one thing is, that is important in the Christian life is the community life. And we need encouragement as we do gospel work. Father, prepare us for persecutions, for hardships that might come. Let us always remember that the gospel still continues to grow, blossom, progress, even when persecution comes. Lord, that is our prayer. 
And we pray all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. God bless you.